Welcome back to Grade 7 Math, Lesson Number 1.7, Composite Shapes. In real life, not everything is shaped like a perfect square, rectangle, or triangle. Well, duh. Many 2D and 3D objects look like they are made of two or more shapes. Now, put the video on pause to consider your answers to this question. Can you think of any examples of 2D and 3D objects that look like they're made of two or more shapes? Shapes that are made by combining two or more regular polygons are called composite shapes. Finding the perimeter of composite shapes is pretty easy. All we have to do is You guessed it, add all of the side lengths. So here's an example. Calculate the perimeter of this composite shape. So, so the perimeter, we'll start at the top and work clockwise. So we've got three plus seven plus eight plus four. And you know what? I threw a trick in here. I left one side blank. Let's think of it this way. The entire length across is eight centimeters. I've got three centimeters up top. So I'm going to subtract. 8 minus 3 equals 5 centimeters. That means I'm going to add my 5 centimeters. When I add these all together, 3 plus 7 is 10, plus 8 is 18, plus 4 is 22, plus 5 is 27. Because it's perimeter, I don't need any square units. Finding the area of a composite shape involves a little more work. The best way to find the area of a composite shape is to first cut the composite shape into regular polygons triangles, squares, rectangles. Then we can find the blank of each polygon. To find the total area, we, another blank, the blank of each polygon. All right. Did you figure out what the missing words were? What we have to do is we have to find the area of each polygon. And then to find the total area, we add the area of each polygon. So here's a question for you. I'll give you the answer, but you're going to try this on your own first. What do you think is the best way to divide this composite shape into smaller shapes? So take a look at the arrow shape. Just take some time to consider where you should draw a line that will cut this arrow into two shapes. Okay, let's see if your answer compares with mine. I think the easiest thing to do is just to draw a line going straight down because that way I've got one complete rectangle, I've got one complete triangle, and from there, I can find out the area of each of these shapes and then add them. Okay, so time for an example. Okay, this one I'll do. Now we could cut this in one of two ways. We could cut a vertical line or we could cut a horizontal line. I feel like cutting a horizontal line. 
Okay, and again, I'm drawing completely freehand on the smart board. Uh, but when we're doing examples in class, we should use proper rulers. So now I've got two. I've got a square, rather, and I've got a rectangle. So let's find the area of the rectangle first. Okay, and look at my dimensions. I've got 20 by 10. So 20 times 10 equals 200 centimeters squared. While I'm writing this down, I want you to consider how to find the area of the square. Should be quite easy. Okay. Look at the area of the square. I've got 10 by 10. And again, we're working with length times width. So I've got 10 times 10. That equals 100 centimeters squared. Okay, and like we said a couple of slides ago, to find the total area, I need to add the area of each piece. So that's 200 plus 100 for a grand total of 300 centimeters. Squared. All right. Okay. Here's one free to try out. I've been generous. I've already pretty well split the shape for you. So you can see that you have a rectangle and you have a triangle. So put this video on pause. You are going to work on a solution at home, which we will take up in tomorrow's class. So the video on pause now. All right, let's see what we have next. The final part, again, you are going to try this out at home because this is a really good challenge. Okay, I'm going to point out the hint I've given you. I've given you your two vertical heights. Got three centimeters from top to bottom for this sort of portion. And then for this portion of the triangle, the height is three. So that should give you an idea of what the total height on the far left side is. But I'm leaving it up to you to determine where you should cut this composite shape into two shapes. So you are going to put this video on pause so you can work on this problem at home. All right, so be ready. Be called on to take up this problem in tomorrow's class. Just to conclude, after going through these two sample problems, we are going to have a variety of problems to work on from our textbook. But until tomorrow's class, this concludes today's video.